Hello there, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to check each and every tool in Affinity Designer version 2. I'm going to use a desktop version, but it's quite similar on iPad. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel for more Affinity content. All right, as you can see, I'm in the document here already. And we're going to focus on the left part of the interface this time, because all of our tools are here on the left. Starting from the top is a move tool, shortcut V. Move tool, as the name say, allow us to move different vector objects and raster images around our screen. More than that, using this move tool, we can also do some basic transformation just by pulling those transform points, adding rotation and similar stuff that you can expect from a move tool. You can over, hover your mouse like that as well. So that's your move tool to move and transform objects. All right. Below that, there is artboard tool. Artboard tool create canvas. By default, we start with this one artboard. If I click insert artboard right now, it seems like nothing happened, but actually I insert the first arrow, the one I already been using from beginning. And from now on, I can keep adding different artboards. Take a look. Let me zoom out. I can just keep adding artboards. And if I export this document as PDF, each artboard will be a new page. This way you can create two artboards for a business card and have a front and back of the business card in one design document. All right, let's delete those artboards simply by pressing delete on my keyboard. So that's artboard tool. Below that, there's something that looks similar to the, the first tool, move tool, but it's white here. All right, and this is very common mistake for beginners. There are two different tools. Take a look. The first tool, let's back here for a moment. The first move tool, move the whole object. And the white tool, the node tool, this will move only one node of that vector object. And you can even add more nodes by clicking on the line. You can drag the line to make it curvy. So this is really powerful tool. And this is the favorite tool of non artist designers like myself, because if my shape is not perfect, I can always grab a note tool and drag this line a little bit left and right, make it exactly as I want. All right. So very powerful tool, the note tool. Take a look. There's a little triangle below. If I hold, I can see there's no tool by default and there's also another tool below. So we got point transform tool below. All right. So this is the center of the transformation that we can move around the object. And now our object is transforming to that point. It's not in the center anymore. So we got different result. Okay, keep in mind, if you transform your object with any of those tools, you can hold shift for snapping results like that. Okay, let's move to the next guy. The next thing is contour tool. That was kind of one of the, I think that was the last tool added in version one before we switched to version two. And at first it was really buggy, but now it's so much better. By using this tool, we can add additional contour around the shape, it can also work as the negative. So we can go inside like that. Of course, for each of those tools, the tricks and techniques we can use, use on them with them. But in this tutorial, we're going more like a list. And if you want to learn more about certain tools, you can search for other tutorials. All right. Now we are heading towards 100 tutorials for Affinity Designer. So I cover most of those tools in separate tutorials already, and some of them I will cover in the near future. So if you search for certain tools, you can check other videos. All right. So that's the contour tool. Make the shape larger or smaller. Very handy if you're designing stickers. So we can make this extra white thing around. So then the cutting plotter can cut around that contour thing. We can bake this into appearance and then we got a normal shape. 
All right, next one, that's a corner tool. It's not only for rounding corners, all right? That's the common misconception. Let's take a look. The corner tool, of course, by default, it will round your corners like that. But we can also modify the style of it. Take a look. If you use the corner tool, we've got several different styles. We can cut the corner inside like that and round them. All right, so there are different styles, different stuff we can do with that. For example, if I use it this way, I can build, make a little shield very quickly. All right, just using corner tool. So not only for rounding corners, keep that in mind. All right, and then below that there's a pen tool. I recently released a whole new video about pen tool. So just for you to know, this is the tool that allow you to draw custom shapes and that's it below that you would say similar tool but not really that's a pencil tool we draw custom shapes but without without full control of the nodes all right what next there's a little triangle so there's also vector brush tool very misleading name i would say and in this case we end up having a line, but it can apply a vector brush. Right now, by default, no brush on it, but we can change that very quickly in the brushes menu. Take a look, there's a brush. Just keep in mind, it's a called vector brush tool, but it's not really a vector brush. We got a vector path, but the brush that is following this path is raster. Take a look, we cannot expand this to vector. That's gonna be really frustrating for new users. All right, they call it vector brush because we got vector path, not because the brush is vector itself. So keep that in mind. All right, what next is a knife tool. So we need something to cut with the knife. All right, a knife tool. That's a new addition in version two, by the way. This will allow you to simply cut through some shapes to split them. All right, so we can split shapes very quickly with knife tool. Next one, that's just a fill tool. So we can quickly put some gradient on, change the gradient style, change the color over here, very basic stuff. All right, after gradient tool is another tool called transparency tool. This one applies special mask gradient to hide part of your shape. Keep in mind, it's for vector objects, all right? Next one, that's not actually a tool, I just place image option. So we can place some images. It's a vector crop tool, something I, I never use. <laughs> Why should I crop vectors? Okay, so you can crop your vector like that. And it's still there, you see? And the original vector is still there. We just crop the view so we cannot see it, but it's not this non-destructive. So I can pull it back and I can see it again. And not very useful in my opinion. All right, and now we're moving into shapes territory. So we got a standard rectangle. If you hold the shift, you will maintain one to one proportion. So we've got a perfect square. Exactly same deal with oval tool. We got ovals and then holding shift, we got perfect circle. And then my favorite part, there's so many pre-made tools in Affinity Designer. Most of vector drawing software offer you triangles, circles, and squares and stuff like that, rectangles and ovals, and sometimes stars, and that's it. And in that, in, in our case, we got so many different tools. So some, some people kind of new users keep forgetting about this stuff. So instead of just pull the hard shape tool from the list, they start drawing this stuff with pen tool. So keep in mind, there are many pre-made shapes for us. And some of them come with those smart control points. We've, see the orange color over there? Let me zoom in a bit. See the orange? We can control those shapes with this orange point. We can turn this into a flower in seconds. Take a look, nice. And of course you can expand this. We can convert to curves. And we got normal nodes and we can go back to node tool and work with nodes. So that's nice. So shape tool and below the shape tool there's brand new, a great, shape builder so 
something we've been waiting for <laughs> years and now it's finally here shape builder tool allow us to design interactions between different shapes so we can then draw and decide that we want to subtract or add certain elements the best part is it's detecting all the intersections between shapes so take a look we got just two shapes the star and the heart shape but with the shape builder tool selected he can detect each of those intersection and treat them as the separate parts all right there's a whole long tutorial about shape builder so if you are into that check out that video all right what next there is of course a text tool for artistic text one liners and frame with longer for longer text so that's really basic text tool we can of course modify fonts and colors everything is here at the top all right we got just few more to go what next there's a color picker and there's a new style picker so we can pick the style from one object and move it to another so let's create two objects and apply a layer style to this second one so let's give it a sh some kind of shadow okay so this one got shadow and now i can select object number one and using style picker i can pick that style shadow all right so that's it here and of course color picker is just a color keep in mind there's one extra color picker here in the color section and you can even pick color from outside the artboard from different programs web webs websites and stuff like that so that's really handy okay what else there is a new area tool so this will be very handy if you're making plans or maps take a look you can of course set up the scale 1 to 10 1 to 100 1 to 1 and using those new tools we can that would be very helpful while working with maps because you can check a distance right now i'm working with pixels one to one so that's not very exciting but you can use a4 paper set a scale and then design a house or garden and stuff like that much easier with those new tools and the area tool showing us the layout of this or area of the filling inside and if you've got like two objects that's a little bit more complex right and this will still apply we can see the area we can see each wall how long it is so that's really nice all right and the very last one we got zoom tool and hand tool and some people really complain about that they put those two tools together zoom tool and hand tool because they keep using them all the time and they really sad that now they must switch between them here and personally i never use them from the tool list because they're so intuitive to use on keyboard so all my life i always zoom with command plus zoom out of common minus that's what i do all the time with my left hand while working in Affinity Designer and to use the hand tool the one to pan around I just press spacebar like that the advantage is if you got tool like pen tool I can press spacebar I release spacebar I'm back to pen tool I don't need to jump between different tools so try to not use pen tool and zoom tool from the tool list all right that's my advice it will really speed up your workflow below the tool panel we got our colors so the circle is for the fill color and the donut is for the outline color for the line you can also see similar icons here in the color section on the right but today we are focusing on the toolbox on the left so that's it all tools cover i hope this video was useful Keep in mind, it's not your task to learn all the tools first before you jump into your first project. Learn when you need them, all right? Nobody will open a toolbox in front of a new student and tell them to learn all of the tools before they can start building some simple projects. That's not the way. That's not how people learn. So today we briefly went through all the tools and don't worry too much about it. You will learn them when you need them in your projects. Thank you for today. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I hope I will see you in the next lesson. Bye.